Hello, everyone. Welcome. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing night so far. As you pop in, feel free to pop into the chat and let us know where you're joining us from. I can't wait to get crafty with all of you guys. Um, so definitely pop into the chat. Let us know where you are from and how you're doing today. If it's cold where you are, we've been having some nice weather kind of back and forth, a little chilly, but not too bad. It's warm in the afternoon. <laughs> Minneapolis, Minnesota, Monterey, California, having a super day, awesome. Connecticut and Georgia, Texas, it's cold. Oh no, Beth. <laughs> Silver Spring, Maryland, it's a little bit cold. I'm a little south of you in Virginia, so maybe just a touch warmer. Uh, Las Vegas, Missouri, Dayton, Ohio, hello, Elise. Hi, <laughs> welcome everyone. Hello, Aubrey in San Diego, Lori, snow in Pennsylvania. Oh my gosh, I am not ready for snow. <laughs> Windy in Southern California, lots of California. I love it. Florida, all over the place. <gasps> Blacksburg, oh my gosh, go Hokies. <laughs> um, hi, we're neighbors. Oh my gosh, yes. I am in uh, southeastern Virginia, so uh, it's not too bad here. It's kind of going back and forth with the, the warm and the cold a little bit, warmer in the afternoon and then colder overnight. Um, so I don't think we'll get too cold. <laughs> um, yes, Nebraska, about 44 degrees today. That's a little chilly for me. <laughs> um, 29, uh, 29 overnight in Myrtle Beach, then it warmed up to the 60s. That sounds like a good day to me. Hi, Roberta. Welcome in. Um, hi, Mary in California. UVA. Uh oh, we have some <laughs> Virginia University <laughs> uh, quarrels in the chat here. <laughs> Hello in Seattle. Hi, Jen. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys all so much for joining. It is awesome to have you here with me on this Thursday night. I hope you guys are staying warm. Uh, my name is Jess Francisco. I am a digital content creator. I mostly work on uh, YouTube. I have a, a channel called A Card Day's Work, uh, where I do card making and paper crafting tutorials. Um, I try to post around once a week and I do a lot of different techniques. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some easy and simple Christmas cards using just a few supplies. Uh, we're going to be using supplies that you guys can find at Michael's um, and um, a major focus on Ranger products. So we're using a few different supplies here and I hope you guys absolutely love the cards. Um, just to let you guys know, the class is being recorded, so if you miss anything or if anyone pops in late, uh, you can definitely watch the replay in around 24 hours on the Michael's YouTube channel, uh, and then it'll also be available around 48 hours after the class on the Michael's website. So if you guys want to pop back in uh, and see anything or refresh yourself on anything that we do during the class today, uh, you can definitely do that in 24 to 48 hours, depending on where you're watching. Um, if you guys have questions along the way, I'll try to keep an eye on chat, um, but I have Patty from Ranger here with me as well, who's going to try to help me out. If you guys have questions, um, she might call out to me and let me know if I don't see them there too, uh, and we'll try to answer all those uh, as quickly as we can for you guys. Hi, Liz in New Jersey. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the uh, camera view of my desktop, and we'll go ahead and jump right in. All right, that went off without a hitch. <laughs> um, okay, so here is a look at the cards that we're going to be making. Um, anywhere along the way, you guys can change things up and make modifications to make them kind of fit your style or your preferences a little bit better. Uh, we're going to be focusing first on a wood grain technique for this background here. Uh, and you can uh, apply this with other colors as well. So if you want to use browns and neutrals, you want to use a different color combination, you can definitely change it up and use what you have. Um, but we're going to be using a clear stamp set from uh, Michaels. It's the Recollections brand. Um, and then we're going to be using some inks from Ranger and some stickles as well. Um, so we will go ahead and get started. All we're going to need to start out is a piece of white cardstock. Um, so I've got mine. This size here is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. <clears throat> and we are going to need um, acrylic block as well. So I'm going to set that to the side. To get started, what we're going to do is take our ink pads. I've got my Ranger Archival inks up here at the top. 
I'm going to start with my gray and my green. So this one is called fern green. And then this one is uh, shadow gray. So I'm going to start with my gray. All I'm going to do is take the ink pad off. I'm going to actually be applying the ink directly to my cardstock here. So no fancy tools needed, literally just your ink pad and your paper to create the wood grain effect. The one thing that you need to decide is whether your card is going to be a portrait or landscape, because that will depend on which way you're going to want to do this technique. If you want to start with a portrait card, you're going to do a swiping motion with the ink pad on the sides here. If you're going to be doing a landscape card, you're going to come in from the sides as well, but you just want to make sure that you're going in towards the center so that you don't end up with your wood grain coming from the top and the bottom or the top and the bottom. So if you're doing a landscape, we're going to come in from the sides. If you're doing a portrait, you're going to come in from uh, the sides this way here. So I'm just going to take my ink pad. I'm going to have it at a bit of an angle, maybe about 45 degrees, and I'm going to swipe it directly onto the ink or onto the paper. I'm going to pull that closer so you guys can hopefully see. It's a very light amount, darker on the edges here, and then lighter as you go in. We're just going to keep repeating that, and you're going to see you're going to get a buildup of color on the outside and light color on the inside. It's great that it's streaky. Don't feel like that's incorrect. That is perfect. <laughs> that's actually what we want. Um, so don't worry about it not being like a perfect block of color. This is perfect. So we're going in from the side there, just adding that darker color here on the outside like that. I'm going to turn it this way and then do the same thing from this side. So basically you end up with a uh, sort of a highlighted area here in the center. And like I said, you can do this with uh, browns as well. If you wanted a more neutral look, this is going to give you more of kind of like a whitewashed wood sort of effect, um, which I liked for the rustic sort of feel of these cards, but you can definitely change up the colors and use what works for you. Mary, that's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that you're learning a lot from Michael's classes. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm happy that you guys are here. So thanks for joining. Um, all right, so once you feel like you've got a good amount of ink there, you can kind of see that wood grain technique start to uh, sort of form here. Uh, you've got that highlight in the center there, darker on the outsides, and that's it for your wood grain. If you wanted to intensify that wood grain, you could take a bone folder and score a line. So just measure like maybe every half an inch or so, um, and then you would get the plank sort of look here. Um, and it's super easy. It's a really nice effect, but we're going to go ahead and skip that step for these cards just to keep it really simple. But if you want to step it up a notch, uh, a notch, then that's perfect. You can definitely do that. Um, am I the only one losing connection? Oh no, Candily, I hope everything looks okay. Everything seems okay on my end. Um, Patty, let me know if we're having any issues. My connection looks okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I think it looks okay on my end, but sometimes it's hard to tell. Um, Okay, so we've got that one. You can add in some other colors as well if you'd like. So we can add in the green here just to kind of give it a little bit more uh, personality. You don't need to add a lot, just a little bit. Um, but when you come in from the sides there, this sort of gives it that kind of like a uh, worn, um, in my opinion, it kind of gives it sort of like that algae sort of look. Um, you know, you've got old wood and it just gives it a little bit of character. You could do this with a nice like turquoise maybe, um, and that would look really great. Again, with browns or neutrals, you could add in a little bit of black as well, but it's so easy and you get a really cool look from doing it that way. Now, this is for a portrait card. We're gonna go ahead and repeat the same thing with a uh, horizontal or landscape card. So I'm gonna get that gray ink out again. And we're gonna start from the sides here like this. Now you've got a little bit more distance to cover when you do it si uh, for a portrait card, I mean, sorry, for a landscape card than you do with the portrait. But this is a great way to get more out of your ink pads than just stamping. This is a really nice way to do a little bit more. Can you do this uh, technique with other ink pads like a water-based ink? Absolutely. 
Um, you can definitely use a water-based ink. The only thing to keep in mind when you use a water-based ink is just to make sure that if you're using any other mediums with it, uh, it won't, you don't want to use another water-based product that will um, interact with your water-based ink and then cause it to run or smear um, or anything like that. So just be mindful of the other products you're using along with it, and then you'll be good to go. But this works really great with distress oxides as well. I use those frequently and distress inks, and those are water-based. Um, so yes, you can definitely use water-based. How long does it take for the ink to dry? And does it need something to seal? It does not. It will dry, um, I think, to the touch, it's pretty much dry right away. It dries extremely quickly. Um, and this is nice because it's waterproof. Um, it doesn't need to be sealed. You don't need to do anything like that. And because it doesn't have any sort of chalky finish, um, you can see I'm not getting anything on my hands here, um, but literally I think probably just a few seconds to dry um, to the touch and then you'll be good to go after that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of green on this one as well. I do like the archivals for this reason, just because uh, you don't have to wait for them to dry. Um, if you were going to be doing any heat embossing over top of it, um, something like that, you may want to take a little bit of extra time for it to dry and then definitely use an anti-static powder um, so that your embossing powder doesn't stick to it if you were going to be doing heat embossing right away. Um, I know that when I use distress oxides and distress inks, I do have to let those dry a little bit longer. Um, if you would like to add a little more character to your background, you can also take the very edge of the ink pad right here uh, and then just drag it right across the center in whatever pattern you feel works best. You can see I'm getting some little lines here. Uh, they're light, but they're there. <laughs> um, and you can do that to just add a little bit. If you feel like you're losing a little bit of your texture, you can definitely... Um, add those little lines in just to give it a little bit more character. Um, as many or as few as you want, that's the beauty of this sort of technique is that it is completely up to you. Whatever you think looks the best is the right way to do it. <laughs> uh, what weight cardstock did you use? Okay, so this is a Recollections cardstock, which is 65 pound, I believe. Um, it's just a regular white cardstock. It's not really meant for water techniques, but it's sturdy enough for layering. I uh, would prefer a 110 pound base for uh, the card base. So this is just gonna be for the card front, but for the card base, which is the actual part that opens and closes, I would use a 110 pound cardstock just because it's a little more sturdy and it's got a little bit more uh, weight to it. For the layers and, and card fronts, I definitely just go with a 65 pound and that works perfect. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> yes, any brand cardstock should work perfectly for this. Um, I haven't had any issues doing this sort of technique on anything. The only thing to consider is that if you have um, textured cardstock, you are going to be able to see that texture in this uh, technique. So you'll want to make sure that if you have a textured um, like watercolor cardstock or something like that, for example, you just make sure that you find the smooth side. Usually a watercolor paper or uh, cardstock will have a smooth and a textured side. Just make sure you use the smooth side for this one. Um, you can experiment with the textured sides as well, but I think I prefer the smooth for this one. All right, so now that we have our backgrounds done for this part of the card here, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our card fronts. What we're going to do is just take another piece of white cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and use my paper trimmer to cut this down just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cut to 2.75. So this again, when I started was four and a quarter by five and a half. And then this gives me two panels that I can use for my card fronts here. So I'll be able to go ahead and put that on the front just like this. All right, so that gives me two. I'm gonna go ahead and cut one more just so that we have another set ready to go. I'll cut right down the middle there, all right. And then I'm also, while we have our paper trimmer out, I'm gonna go ahead and use my red cardstock. This is also Recollections brand, 65 pound cardstock. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down as well. 
So to start out with, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. There we go. All right, so now we've got our pages, but you can see here in the sample that I made, it's just got a little bit of a border around the edge here. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to trim just a little bit um, about, mm, let's see, it starts at 4.25. I'm gonna go ahead and trim a quarter of an inch off of my white panel to make it four. And then that way I can leave this one the same length or the same height. And then I'll just be able to trim it to three inches instead of 2.75. So we're just doing it one quarter inch larger so that when I mount my white piece on here, it actually looks like a perfect little mat for it. And then that will go right on top of our card here, just like this. So we're just creating a little layered effect here so that you've got that nice sort of spotlighted clean panel in the center here. Um, have you embossed the paper first and then added the ink on the edge? Nope, you don't have to emboss it at all. Thank you so much, Patty. <laughs> um, you just start with a plain white piece of cardstock and you apply the ink pad directly to the cardstock. And if anyone has questions on how we did that technique, um, definitely just let me know. We can always go back and go over it again. Uh, so for the white piece, your measurement is 2.75 high and then uh, four wide or tall. So 2.75 by four, <laughs> uh, 2.75 by four. And then this one is one quarter inch larger. So it's going to be three by 4.25. And then our largest piece that we started out with, this piece here is four and a quarter. So 4.25 by 5.5. And this is for an A2 sized card. Um, if you guys are using the paper packs, there are note card packs that come from Michael's as well. So you get the note cards um, and then it comes with envelopes as well. Um, you can use that. This is an A2 size. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So what we'll end up doing is just mounting this directly onto our card. And then these will go on top as well. And will you just use a tape runner adhesive for that? Yep, no problem at all. Um, and as always, definitely ask those questions in the chat. Uh, don't be shy. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> you guys can change this up as well. Don't feel like you have to stick with these measurements. If you prefer a smaller panel on the front or a larger panel on the front, feel free to change it up and use whatever you think looks best. Um, that's just what I've got here for my sizes, but for sure use whatever you like. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut one more of this. So it's three by four. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut this one as well. Um, let's see. We're going to go ahead and do four. <clears throat> Now you will have some scraps, so feel free to use these as well. Um, for other cards, you've got some, some little scraps that you could use for sentiments. I always set them aside and I keep a little scrap drawer grow, uh, going so that I have access to those after the fact. Uh, let's see what our measurements are here. Are we at four? Uh, we've got a little room. Okay, so we're gonna go three inches here on this side. Make sure I've got enough room here. So three inches, and then we're gonna cut that quarter off over here to make it four inches. So three by four for that one, and then just a quarter inch smaller in both directions for the white. All right, so now that we have our panels all cut and ready to go, we can go ahead and start creating our front pieces as well. If you'd like to do this like a mass production sort of style, you could always spend some time cutting out your uh, your pieces first, and then you'll be ready to go once you go ahead and uh, want to assemble everything. Um, and then you'll have just a nice little stack or pile of each one. So for the background, all we're going to do is take our stamp set. This one is uh, Recollections Clear Stamp Set. We're going to be using the trees here, these solid image trees. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that out of the packaging here. So clear stamps, you, you want to use an acrylic block. 
this is just a piece of uh, acrylic that is where the stamp will stick to so that you can go ahead and put it in the ink and then stamp it directly onto your panel. Uh, we're going to be using the green ink just like we used earlier. I'm going to move these out of the way just so we have a little bit of extra room here. So what we're going to do is create a, a scene of trees in the background. Now to do that, we're going to be using just this one ink pad. I know there are, there are multiple colors here, but we're going to be using a technique called second generation stamping. And what that means is we're going to stamp once in the green ink, which will give us the full color. So we're going to go ahead and gently tap that into the ink pad. We want to make sure that we've got nice coverage here. Make sure the entire stamp is completely covered with ink. Uh, I've got like a couple little spots here. Feel free to turn it over, look at it, inspect it, and make sure that it's completely covered. You'll be able to see the ink on the stamp. You can see that it kind of starts to turn green a little bit there. Uh, and then we're going to come to our panel and pick a spot. I'm going to go not quite to the edge, but a little bit over to the right here. Uh, and I'm going to go fairly close to the bottom. You, if you would prefer that your scene goes completely off the card so that you don't have any white space at the bottom, make sure that your stamp lines up with that bottom and maybe overlaps just a little bit. Um, otherwise, you can leave a little bit of white at the bottom to kind of affect like a snow sort of look um, or leave it as is. It's up to you. Preferences as always. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got our first stamp here. And then um, before we stamp again, so normally you would dip, I'll do two at, I'll do two at a time. So normally you would do your first stamp. So we would just stamp, right? And we're gonna go ahead and stamp it just like that. Okay. And then you would ink it up again, but instead we're gonna go ahead and actually stamp it again without inking it up again, without doing anything else. We're gonna use the residual amounts of ink and you can see that it gives a shadow effect. So it's a lighter version of that same color, but it looks like it's farther away in the distance. So instead of having that really dark green and then having to use a lighter green to achieve this color here, we're just gonna use that second generation of the same ink. So we'll go ahead and do it again. Let's get the small tree and start working on that as well. So you can set this one aside for just a second. We're gonna go ahead and put the small tree on. <clears throat> We're gonna do a darker impression first. Thanks, Elise. It's such a great way, especially if you don't have a ton of ink colors, it is a really, really nice way to stretch your supplies and really get the most out of your uh, ink pads that you do have. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp one time. We've got our nice dark ink. I'm gonna go up a little bit higher and fill in this space up here. So we have a nice tree line. And because it's a lighter color, it's not going to stamp right over top. It just looks like it's farther in the background like trees in the distance. So you get a really nice sort of forest effect going on and it looks beautiful on your cards. Now you may be wondering, how am I going to do this if I want to fill in this space over here, but I don't have more dark pieces to stamp. What I generally will do is just take a scrap piece of paper and do my first stamp on that instead. So you go ahead and do your stamping on your scrap paper once and then you bring it over here to your final project and you stamp it right down. So you could stamp this out and then cut these trees out and use them for something. You don't have to waste them. Or if you prefer, you could just use a piece of computer paper for your first stamp. Um, that way you're not using up any of your cardstock that you don't wanna waste. Just use a piece of printer or computer paper, stamp them out, and then you can toss it when you're done. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp down here. One time, there's my first dark image. And then I'm actually gonna put one up here and we've got another tree in the background there. I'm gonna go ahead and keep repeating this. Uh, is it base five and a quarter, four? Um, yeah, sorry, five and a half, four and a quarter, yes. Then white that we textured is um, five and a quarter, four. Um, so the white piece, oh, I'm sorry, yes. It's, um, this is five and a half. It's the same measurement as the card base. This one is the exact same size. 
So it will be, you can just attach it directly and it will be the exact same size. So four and a quarter by five and a half. Stamp first on envelope. Oh my gosh, Sharon, that's an amazing idea. I actually really love that. That's a good idea. I'm going to have to start doing that. So when you do your second generation stamping, you can stamp it directly on the envelope and then you've got a beautiful uh, scene with trees and whatnot on your envelope as well. That's a great idea. I love it. Um, could you please demonstrate? Yes, absolutely. Monica, I would love to. I think that we're, we're moving at a pretty good pace. So I think we're going to have a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I think we're going to have extra time that we'll be able to go over and, um, and demonstrate the technique again. I would definitely be happy to. Um, I, I was worried that my ink might be dry, so I'm stamping again. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and put one more in the back here, and then I'm gonna call this one done. So I've got my scene here. I don't know if that's hard to see. It might be a little hard to see in the lighting, but hopefully you can see those shadowed trees in the background there. I love the way that that looks. <laughs> um, so we've got that. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our next piece here. Oh, we've got another one here. So we'll go ahead and do all of them. Um, and then the other one, one of them, I'm gonna turn sideways, uh, actually two of them. Let's do two of them sideways and we'll do two of them vertically. Um, so I'll start with this one. We'll go, now my desk is getting a little cluttered. <laughs> we'll go in with our tree here in the front. There we go. So we've got our first one and then we're gonna go ahead and put another one here with our second generation stamp. Um, the stamp set is available. Yes, unfortunately it doesn't seem to be available online but it is available in the stores. Um, so uh, you can definitely find it at a local Michaels if you happen to have one. If you have a similar stamp set, you can definitely use that as well. Something that has solid images, anything that has solid rather than an outline um, will work perfectly for this. And the cool thing about this technique is you can do this with other types of stamps as well. Um, and like grass stamps or mountains or um, anything like that to form scenes and it looks amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one here. Um, and then let's see, I think I want to add another larger tree. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually set that to the side for just a second. I'm gonna put my larger tree back on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and ink up our stamp set again. Make sure we've got good coverage here. I'm going to go ahead and stamp my first image here and what I should have probably been doing you guys, which would have been quite smarter instead of wasting this, I could have been doing my horizontal ones at the same time. So if you feel like multitasking, instead of doing one panel at a time, you could actually do multiples at once and just use your first generation on one second generation on the next for a little while. Um, <clears throat> Oh yeah, that would be actually really cute if you put the, and then just put the sentiment on the top even maybe. So if you want to, you can get a bonus card out of this. Don't stamp this one up here. But if you just did the line, oh, you could even do like, if you wanted to do a non-traditional Christmas card, you could do like a little rainbow of trees or maybe like different shades of uh, one color, whatever your, whatever your theme or color scheme is for Christmas. Like if you do navy, maybe um, you could do different shades of the blue there. Um, that would be really pretty. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a large tree here. Okay, we've got one. And then for the background of this one, I'm gonna use my second generation stamp. There we go. Now I've got a little bit of empty space down here. I'm fine with that. Um, but if you guys don't like that, you can just stamp a little bit lower so that the bottom of the stamp hangs off the edge there. And then that will close in that space. So you don't have that empty little bit of white. It doesn't bother me. I think it looks okay. Um, but if you don't like that, you can just move the stamps down just a little bit. Could you use watercolor? Yes, definitely. Um, you could use watercolor if you prefer. Um, you can um, put water-based products onto the stamps the same way. 
away. The only thing is that you will get a little bit more of a loose look to it. It won't look as crisp, especially with the little uh, details on the branches. So it's just personal preference. The space looks like snow. That's what I thought too. <laughs> I like it as well. I'm happy with it. <laughs> it's a built-in snow effect. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and add a little bit here on this one as well. I'm going to add one off to the side here. And then uh, I'm happy with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up here. And we're going to go ahead and do our second generation stamping on the side right here. So we've got that going. We're going to go ahead and keep inking up. <laughs> a lot of repeat stamping here, but I think it's worth it. I really, really like this effect. I think it just looks gorgeous. And because, like I said earlier, because it's a lighter color of the same color, you don't have any overlapping lines, no weird edges of stamps overlapping each other. Um, I think it just, it works really, really well. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little one on this side and then a little bit of a tree here on this side. So we've got a little bit of those dark bits there. Uh, and then we're just gonna go ahead and stamp another one here. Um, now I've got a little bit of darker color here because I used the colors from the inside. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp right over that just to kind of try to even it out just a little bit, um, but it won't make a big difference. It has a little bit of a darker color in the middle. I'm not sure if you can tell, <laughs> um, but there we go. There's that. I'm gonna do one more set of trees or one more tree, I should say, on the edge over here. I'm gonna put it just a little bit lower, I think. Um, I think it's nice to vary the height of your trees just so that you have a variety. Um, I feel like it looks a little bit nicer when you go to um, like make it as an, a complete scene here. But again, this is all personal preference. It just depends on what you guys like. I like the height variation just so that it looks a little bit more interesting. It has a little bit more depth because all trees are not the same size. <laughs> um, but I really, really like how that turned out. Okay. And then we're on to our last panel, which we're going to do horizontally. <clears throat> you could use micron pigment markers to emphasize some details. That's a great idea. Um, and there is in this stamp set, there is uh, some little detailing here, which I think you could use as snow, maybe. Um, I think this is supposed to be snow. So I don't know if you can see that. Let me put something white behind it. There we go. Um, this one here, I believe is supposed to be snow. So if you stamped this with like either a white pigment ink or um, with a um, embossing ink and then heat embossed once the ink was dry, um, that would be a really cool way to add some extra detail to your card as well. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I could have just stamped that because it was our first stamp, but that's okay. We'll start with a, uh, we'll start with the second generation stamp. Here we go. And then we'll just stamp this one right over top. Oh, I almost inked it up again. And then we'll do a little bit of a shorter one over here. And again, this is just personal preference, whatever you guys think looks nice whatever pattern you like best, uh, you can go ahead and use that. I'm just gonna do a little one over here. Oh, I didn't quite get it stamped all the way. <laughs> there we go. And then let's do this little guy here. Okay. I'm gonna get a little bit, I wasn't quite inked up all the way, like my darker trees on the side. And then we're gonna go ahead and do one in the middle here. Okay, I'm going to stamp this off over here. We're going to do a taller one in the center. Okay, and then on this one, so once you've got your scenes all done, I'm going to go ahead and set my Christmas tree background to the side. <laughs> We've got some gorgeous deer images here that we're going to use for the background as well to go as part of our scene. You don't have to use this by any means. You can definitely skip this if you don't like the deer on there. Um, I thought on some of them, it adds a nice little extra bit of something. I really love this one that's sitting down at the bottom. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one to use. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pick that up with my acrylic block so that it's nice and stuck on there. And then I'm going to use the black archival ink. If you are using a water-based ink, I would still recommend using an archival ink for stamping over top of it. Um, and that is just because sometimes the water-based inks, um, like if you're using distress inks or distress oxides, for example, and you stamp with something black over top of it, um, sometimes that ink will sort of fade into the background and it'll look a little bit gray. Um, and that's just because it's reacting with the water because it's also water-based. Um, using the archival because it's waterproof, it does sit on top of the paper uh, a little or on top of the ink a little bit better if you're using a water based ink. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this right down at the bottom. Now this one I would recommend just slightly going off of the bottom of the page just so that you don't have a bunch of extra space underneath and it will look like the deer is floating in the air. You don't want it to look like your deer is floating because that would be weird. <laughs> so just make sure that you go right down to the bottom and then you've got that nice silhouette scene that looks like the deer is actually down there on the forest floor. So that's that one. And we'll go ahead and do the same with this one here. Jess, there's a question. Yes. Is the sentiment stamp two pieces? Um, the sentiment stamp, which one? Um, it's part of this same stamp set. So, oops, I got my trees on here. <laughs> um, so I used multiple sentiments here. I used a Merry Christmas and then I used a wishing you a happy holiday. So in this sentiment set or in this stamp set, the Merry Christmas is all one piece. Um, it's just, uh, it's got the swirls on the top and then the words in the center, but it's all one piece. Um, and then the words for the wishing you a very happy holiday are all one piece as well. So everything is all lined up for you already. Um, you don't have to worry about that. I hope that answers the question. Is that, was that the right, the right question? <laughs> I think oh, so. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to go ahead and do the same. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to miss your question. <laughs> um, okay. So here we go with our next deer here. I like to put it over to the left just so that the card doesn't look too heavy in the center. Um, but you could always put it wherever you feel best about it. I think this one I prefer on the left side because the deer is looking back towards the right um, and it helps kind of draw the attention of the card back over this way. If the deer were looking this way, like this deer here, this one, I would probably put it on this side um, because if you put it over here, the deer's looking off the edge of the card and that might look a little bit weird. <laughs> um, but if you put it over on the left and the deer is looking this way, it kind of ties the card together and brings everything into a nice scene. Um, if you're using this deer, I would definitely put it on this side. If you're going to use the buck, I would put it over on the left. Yes, the rule of thirds. <laughs> it looks so much nicer. Um, okay, so we've got our deer. So we're done there. This is coming along so nicely. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to our sentiments. So I do really like the Merry Christmas one for the vertical cards, just because it has a little bit more room. Um, and then for the horizontal cards, we're gonna go ahead and use that wishing you a very happy holiday. Now, you can use whatever sentiments you want. If you like it to say Christmas and you're really, um, that's really Im important to you, definitely use a Christmas one. Um, there's a couple different sentiments on this one specifically, like winter wonderland, peace on earth, uh, Christmas wishes, so um, enjoy. There's a bunch of different sentiments you can choose from. So feel free to pick what you like the best and then use that one. Um, I'm just using the ones that stood out to me at the time. But again, as always, it's just personal preference. So you make sure you get your stamp nice and inked up with your black ink. I like to just kind of line it up with my uh, mat here just so that I know that it's not crooked. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, stamp my sentiment here. I like to stamp it just on the tree line, but not too far into it or too far down. Nice, uh, close to the top, but not at the very top. So you give it a little bit of space at the top and then center it side to side. Um, and then you just want it in the top third of your uh, card front here. And then there's our panel. I really, really love the way how the, that works. Um, the card with two rows of trees, put a ribbon between them, add a bold sentiment on the bottom and it might, it might be, oh my gosh, that's a good idea. 
Um, this one here, <laughs> that would be cute. I'll have to try it out maybe at the end if we have time. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Um, okay, I'm gonna put this one here and then we're gonna go ahead and do the same on this one. If you do end up with any ink on your acrylic block, I would definitely recommend wiping it off first um, just because I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally ruined my hard work and all of my stamping by accidentally smudging black ink either from my fingers or from the acrylic block onto my background. And that is extremely frustrating. So uh, definitely just make sure if you get any ink on your acrylic block, make sure you wipe it off before you go and stamp onto your card. Again, just lining it up here, getting it nice and centered, or at least hopefully centered. <laughs> uh, and then there is our sentiment as well. These are coming together so cute, you guys. All right, so we're done with that sentiment. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to Merry Christmas, which is right up top here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up with my acrylic block. Same process here, just easy peasy stamping going to make sure we get all of those intricate little details covered with ink. Now, if this is the first time you are using your uh, stamp, I would definitely recommend using a scrap piece and stamping your image onto the scrap piece first, just to make sure your stamp looks great. You're getting a clear image and do any troubleshooting with your stamping before you take it to your project. That way you're not frustrated that you've wasted your time making this beautiful background and then your sentiment gets messed up. Um, <clears throat> I've never used stamps. How do you clean the stamps? Um, these can just be cleaned with a cloth and water. If they get really dirty, you can use like a mild soap uh, and water to clean them, but they generally speaking don't need it. Um, how do the stamps come off the acrylic block? I've never worked with these. Oh, easy. Literally, they just peel right off. <laughs> they, uh, I guess with the material, they just cling right to the, the acrylic um, and they stick, but they just easily peel right off and you just put them right back on the backing sheet. Yes, you can use baby wipes as well. Um, I haven't had great luck with baby wipes only because a lot of the baby wipes tend to have sort of like a lint that gets left behind sometimes. Um, and it can make things sort of stick to your stamps, which can be frustrating. I like to use a microfiber cloth, which is what this is. It's extremely dirty as you can see, but I can just toss it in the wash when I'm done after lots and lots of crafty love. <laughs> um, but you could use a paper towel if you wanted to, any kind of cloth that you have. Um, you just wanna make sure that if you're using something that might leave something behind, like little lints or fibers, um, that you go back and look because the next time that you go to stamp, if there is a tiny little lint or fiber or hair in there, it will leave an impression and you'll get kind of this fuzzy line uh, in your stamped image. <clears throat> Uh, to clean your stamp. Yes. Yeah. The baby wipes have fibers that can get in. Yes. Ask me how I know about all that. <laughs> I've had a lot of issues with uh, bad stamping just because my stamps weren't clean. Um, so here we go with our uh, sentiment for the top. I'm going to keep this in the top third, just like we did before. And if you guys knew me, um, you would be very proud of me because using acrylic blocks is not my forte, <laughs> um, but I feel like we're having pretty good luck here. Um, so if I can do it, there's hope for the rest of us. <laughs> um, so there's our sentiment there. If you feel worried that you're not going to get a good impression, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I kind of was rubbing my fingers along the top just to make sure that it got nice coverage. Um, if you um, are having trouble getting a really nice clean impression, sometimes that can help just to make sure all the surfaces of the stamp touch the cardstock. Um, and that you get a nice impression there. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this sentiment here. Yeah, I do like to use the reusable washcloth just because um, it's nice for the environment <laughs> to not use something disposable. Um, and I think that it's worth it. It works really well for me and I like to be able to keep something handy on my desk all the time. Um, but as with most stuff, it's usually just personal preference. <laughs> um, I usually use a stamping platform. It's true, Roberta. Roberta knows me. <laughs> um, <laughs> there we go. All right. 
So we are done with our stamping there. Now for a finishing touch, you can also add a glitter or something like that. This is a stickles, um, which is a glitter glue. But if you use a thin coat of it, it can just be used as a nice little bit of shimmer and shine on your background. Um, you can add it to one or multiple of the trees just to give your card a little bit something extra. So what I'm going to do is use a tape runner first uh, and go ahead and attach my card panels to their mats. Um, and then we'll go ahead. Uh oh, somehow this one ended up a little long. See, we all make mistakes. <laughs> um, yeah, I cut them long or maybe I just cut the red pieces too short. Hold on. What have I done here? Hmm. Oh, oh, I know what happened. <laughs> They're diff. Okay. Is that what happened? Yes. Okay. So this one is my vertical. This one seems longer. I think I didn't cut this one properly. Yeah. I'm missing a core. Okay. Leave it to me to not cut one of them all the way. <laughs> what I'm going to do to fix that, because we all make, uh, you cut some of the red pieces to sh too short, four instead of four and a quarter. Ooh. Um, let me look. I think what I'm going to do is just cut an eighth of an inch off of the edge of both of these. I don't know why this one ended up shorter. I mean, longer. I think I just, did I forget to cut it? <laughs> okay. That's the right size. Yeah. This one is just a quarter of an inch too long. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to trim an eighth of an inch off of both sides. That way everything is still the same proportions. <clears throat> it happens to everyone you were talking. I know I get distracted, you guys. <laughs> I was trying to look at the chat and I got distracted and cut them to the wrong size. Okay, that's perfect. Let's just make sure they're all the same size while we're at it. Let's grab my other two. <laughs> we'll do any of our trimming all at once. Those are the same. This one looks long, Haha. -ha. okay. This one is long. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go to four and an eighth and then right down to four. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Even when we're not talking, thank you for making me not feel so bad. <laughs> uh, leave it to me to cut them not, not properly. <laughs> did I cut the brown? I, so that did happen. All right. I cut some of the red ones too short. Is that right? I think it is. Or did I take the wrong piece? Like was my, cause I have extras over here. No, I put the scraps over to the side. Good grief, you guys. Okay, this one is the correct size. <laughs> this one looks too short. It's the same, I mean, it could still work. There we go. <laughs> we'll just recut them, it's okay. I can still use these. How did this happen? Oh no. Okay. So wait, are these, this is too thin. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Just to double check my measurements here, three, uh, 2.75 by four, right? 2.75 by four. So that means this one should be three by four. It's the right width. It just wasn't the right, okay. Or the right height. Just double checking my work. No, I'm cutting it the wrong direction. This is what happened. Don't leave me in charge of the measuring, you guys. I figured it out. I figured out what happens. <clears throat> the red should be four and a quarter, not four. <laughs> That's what happened. So when I went to go cut my other piece, it was from a piece that I had trimmed down to four. That's why it wasn't long enough. So then this should be three. Goodness gracious. Let me just double check to make sure it's right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to cut another one. Three. Goodness gracious. Yes. I will definitely still be able to use the scraps. I feel bad for messing up the trimming. <laughs> okay. Now we are good to go. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Now we can take our a uh, tape runner and put our tape onto the back here. 
we're just going to do a nice little line there and a nice little line here. If you guys feel like it needs more tape than that, you can definitely do more. Um, I don't generally feel like it needs more than that. So I try to be uh, cost effective with my supplies and not use too much if I don't need to. Um, we're going to go ahead and center that, line it up nice and neat so that it has a nice even border around the outside. It's good. You're not a carpenter. Yes, paper is cheaper. Um, <laughs> I don't want to even know what I would be like in uh, the workshop. <laughs> um, but there we go. We've got our first one mounted after a little trial and error. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to go ahead and do, I like to do the long side because it does give a little bit more coverage. We're going to go ahead and mount this directly here. Now, I think I only did two backgrounds, so we won't mount all of them. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and mount these two. I'm going to set these off to the side. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to turn this over, put our tape on the back and then mount this directly to our background. Just make sure you mount it to the correct background. Um, you want the one that follows the direction you are going. So if you're putting it horizontally, you want your line, your inked lines here coming in horizontally. Um, just because it looks a little weird if you, I mean, it wouldn't, if you put this one here, I feel like it just looks a little odd. I don't know, it's personal preference. If you prefer it that way, you could totally do it that way. I think I like it better like this, um, but you do your own thing. <laughs> so we just go ahead and mount it directly on there. If you wanted some dimension, you could use some foam or foam tape, um, but we're gonna keep it nice and simple and then just go ahead and mount this directly to our card base. Um, for this one, I am going to put a little bit extra, just a little touch in the center and a little bit on the sides. And my favorite way to line these up is to stand the card up and then just kind of slide it until it matches up. And then that way you don't have any extras. It's not hanging off the sides or anything like that. You've got a nice even uh, card base there. So that is our finished first card. Unless you want to add the stickles, which you definitely can. Um, if you want to add stickles, what I would recommend is to put a little bit of washi tape or something that's low tack uh, in your card to hold it closed like this. You just stick it right in there so that it doesn't keep popping open on you. <laughs> um, and then if you want to, definitely uh, test your stickles on a scrap surface first just to make sure they're coming out okay and it's not clogged and you don't need to do anything. I've never had any problems with my stickles clogging um, but other things clogging I have had problems with. <laughs> um, in this one I think I'm going to go ahead and put the stickles onto my deer here. Um, so I'm just going to go around the edge. I'm not going to add a ton. Now this seems quite dimensional but uh, it will dry a little flatter than it is currently. So while it's fresh, it does kind of puff up a little bit, but uh, once it dries, it will be flat. Um, it'll have just a tiny bit of raised texture, but not anything large. Um, and if you just put it on like this, it's gonna be thicker. It's gonna take a little bit of time to dry, but you can see there you've got that gorgeous shimmer. This one is mostly clear with a little bit of gold um, and colored sparkles in it, um, but that's gonna take just a little bit of time to dry. You may wanna leave these overnight just to make sure they're completely dry before you put them in um, uh, an envelope or anything like that. Um, and then it'll just look like glitter once it's done. It's not gonna come off or flake off or anything like that. It will just be a dried piece of glitter there. So there's that one. Um, you can also, if you would prefer, let's go ahead and attach this one real quick to our card here. I'm going to go ahead and put this one on. Before I mount this, oops, before I mount this to my card base, I'm going to go ahead and add the little bit of stickles first, but I'm going to do it in a little bit of a different way. So you could use a Q-tip for this or a stylus or anything you want. Um, but basically all I'm going to do is kind of put some stickles in the middle, right? And then instead of filling the entire area like I did with the first one, I'm just going to take my stylus or Q-tip or whatever you have and do sort of little swirling motions to get that glitter 
to spread out over my image. This gives you a little bit more control um, and you can kind of guide where it's going. And once you spread that out, it has a much thinner layer of the glitter. Uh, and then you will have a shorter drying time and then it gives a much more subtle effect. So instead of having a real solid effect with your stickles where the whole layer is covered, you've got a nice little bit here where it's just a subtle glitter. It's not anything crazy. <laughs> um, and then you've got the bonus of extra dry or less drying time than you would have previously. So that is the way that that one looks. So you see how you've got that real nice sparkle there. Now this one will be very sparkly as well, but it takes a little bit of time to dry. Here it looks a little more translucent. Once it dries, it will be more obvious that it's glitter. Um, but when, when it's still wet, it looks a little bit different. Um, and then you've got this one here. <clears throat> so different effects, they look different, but you got, you've got two different techniques that you can use there. Um, again, just to stretch the supplies that you have a little bit more. Um, what is the product you're using? Here you go. It's called Stickles. Um, so this is a glitter glue from Ranger. Um, and I think Patty popped it into the chat a little bit earlier, but maybe we can grab it again. Um, so this comes in a variety of different colors, but uh, it's really great for adding accents like this. Um, and then we are running into the end of our time right now, but we had a request to look at the technique from the beginning again. Um, so if you guys are ready for that, I can go ahead and show you how to do the background again. So how to get that wood grain effect. Oh, Elise, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That makes my heart so happy. <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys are all here and having a good time. So with our uh, white cardstock, this hasn't been treated. It's just a plain cardstock here. This is a Recollection 65 pound white cardstock. Um, we're gonna take our Ranger archival ink here. This is in shadow gray. Um, we talked about earlier how you can change up the color schemes uh, and you can definitely make this work for other colors as well. Um, all we're doing is taking the edge of the ink pad here at about a 45 degree angle and just swiping it directly across. I got a big mark here um, because I put the ink pad down. Can you guys see that? But we're gonna make it work. Watch what we're gonna do. So if you make a mistake like this, make it work to your advantage. I'm gonna put another one right here like that. Uh, and then I think another one right here like that. And then we're gonna make it look like those are the boards. <laughs> so instead of giving up and starting over, uh, we're just gonna make it work for us. <laughs> so I'm gonna make it come from both directions here so that it looks like we've got a nice sort of board uh, pattern going on. We're gonna make it go both directions. <laughs> Don't ever give up. <laughs> if you guys feel like you have ruined a card, you probably haven't. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could always take a pen and draw in little, um, like little circles on the edges here to make it look like boards. Um, it'll, it'll look a little bit more like wood. Um, I'm gonna add in those little uh, marks that we talked about earlier um, to kind of give it a little bit more character coming from those, just using the very edge of the ink pad. Like this. Oh my goodness. Actually, that's really cool. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and do another one that doesn't have that. Um, oh my gosh, thank you. I think that's a really cool technique. Now, if you wanted to, you could also add a line here in the center, uh, just so that, you know, you get that definition between the planks there but that looks really cool. I'm a fan. I like that a lot. Okay. So now without the mess up, <laughs> um, we're going to go right along the edge here. We're just swiping and then lighter as you go towards the center. So a little heavier on the outside and then lighter as you work towards the center. So you get that highlighted sort of look that gives you that wood grain feeling like that. And you can keep darkening it up, make it as dark or as light as you want, but this gives that sort of whitewashed wood effect. Helen, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Is the color of the background ink a personal choice? Yes, absolutely. You could definitely use browns. I, in fact, really love to use browns for this. Um, I use my Distress Oxides really frequently for this technique. 
um, and I'll use a variety of different brown colors just to get that nice effect. Um, I really, really like that. Now you can go in with your green if you want to. You could also use a turquoise if it was more of like a nautical beachy sort of wood that you were going for. You could use the gray with browns uh, or like a tan. You don't have to use the green at all. Um, it's just personal preference, but yeah, I love to do this with a variety of different colors, but there you go. Easy peasy, super quick backgrounds, and you could use these for just about anything. <laughs> I absolutely love how these turned out and I hope you guys do too. I hope you love all of the cards and that you are able to make some gorgeous Christmas cards using some of these techniques or replicate these ones. If you do make uh, these cards, I would love to see them and see what you've created. Um, if you guys have Instagram, feel free to tag me on Instagram at a card day's work. Um, let me go ahead. I'll type it in the chat for you guys here, just so you have that. A card day's work. So that is my Instagram handle. Let me go ahead and switch over to uh, the face camera. Haha, <laughs> -ha, hello. <laughs> all right. So we are all finished, you guys. I hope that you do love the cards that we made. Um, feel free to ask any questions or anything that you may have before we wrap up and end things. Um, but if you guys are looking to keep in touch with me outside of the class, um, uh oh, oh no, it says privately. Uh oh, hold on. <laughs> um, let's see, everyone, let's send it to everyone. Here we go. Um, a card day's work. There we go. Yay. I don't know why it was set to private. That was weird. <laughs> Not to me. Okay. Perfect. Um, thank you guys so much. Oh yes. Thank you, Patty, for the hashtag. So you guys can use hashtag make it with Michaels. Um, and then you can also use hashtag Michaels classes. Um, and if you guys tag me at a card day's work, then I'll be able to see them and get notified when you guys post them. Um, and I can comment and check them out for you guys. Um, if you're looking for me outside of Michaels classes, you can find me on my YouTube channel, which is a card day's work. Uh, I hope that I'll see you guys in some future videos. And just a reminder, uh, the class was recorded. So if you guys missed anything or you want to rewatch the techniques or go back and just revisit anything that we've done, you can do that in about 24 hours on the Michaels website. Um, I'm sorry, on the Michaels YouTube channel and then on the Michaels website within 48 hours about it will be ready for replay there as well. Um, I hope that you guys did enjoy it. I definitely did. I had a great time. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of the month um, and that the rest of the year treats you guys really well. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Have a wonderful night, everyone. See you next time. Bye.